Hi, welcome to Safe Cracking for Everyone, Part 8. I'll be giving some tips on how to manipulate Lagarde 3330 Group 2 safe locks. Uh, now, this is not a Lagarde 3330, this is the Sparrow's Challenge Vault, but I want to show this because this is a really good example of what the dial for a Lagarde lock would look like. Generally, an SNG has a dial which looks similar to this. Uh, it could have a different, you know, ring or a slightly different, you know, look to it, but generally, Lagards have this sort of dial. Now, I mean, yeah, SMGs have this sort of dial. And uh, Lagards are more uh, silver with the black markings instead, and just a slightly different shape, and the dial will have these lines, these ridges on it as well. Now, of course, it can change. The dial doesn't really matter. You can swap out the dials, and it would still work just fine. Uh, but that's generally how you would recognize a Lagarde lock if it looks like this. Um, so the thing is, Lagarde locks have wheels that are more oval in shape, which means that all the gates could be masked by the other wheels. So in this case, what you can do is you can graph as normal, and you will see several rises, up to three. Um, but you know they they could also be combined and whatnot, depending on where the wheels are positioned relative to each other. But you want to find the high points and the low points. And there's a few different ways to do this. Is You can graph as normal with the every two increments, or you can graph every 10 increments, because at this point you don't need to be precise. We're not looking for the gates. We're only looking for high and low points, approximately. So to save time, I personally choose to graph every 10 increments. So I only do 10 readings around the dial with all wheels left. And uh, what you can do then is you can either just find the high point and locate which wheel it's on, either through wheel isolation or the high-low test. Instead of looking for you know a gate, you're just looking for the high point. So you're looking for the then the 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 uh, change in the contact area still, but for something different. Um, and once you do that, you can just put that wheel 90 degrees off. So if you find that at let's say 80 you would just put that 25 numbers off, so 10, 20, so 55. Um, because ovals, 90 degrees off the high point is the low, low point. Uh, or what you can do is you can just find the low points. Instead of you know finding where the high points are and throwing it off, you can just find the low points. Um, and then once you have the lowest point in the all wheels left graph, let's say every 10 increment, you just park two of the wheels there and you run the third wheel in isolation. Uh, and then when you find a gate, whether you find a gate or not, doesn't matter. If you find a gate, that's great if you have good gate signature. Otherwise, you just pretend that the lowest point on the graph is a gate. And then you put wheel three there while you run wheel two in isolation, with wheel one still at its original low point. And, uh, and then you repeat the same process. You pretend like the lowest point for wheel two is a gate if there's no gate signature, and then you want run wheel one in isolation. And you just keep repeating, constantly lowering each wheel to a lower point so that one of the other wheels can finally read with an actual gate signature. And you will get eventually a gate signature that way. So that's, that's my preferred method. Um, I just do 10 readings around the dial, so every 10 increments, put wheels one and two on that low point with right rotation, run wheel three with left rotation, by itself in wheel isolation. And then if I don't get a gate signature, if I do, then that's great. Wheel three will just stay on where that gate is. But if I don't, then I just pretend like the lowest point is the gate. I put wheel three on the lowest point, running wheel two in an isolation and repeat the same process. So that's a really good way in order to unmask the wheels. Uh, sometimes you'll get lucky and the guards won't give you any issues. The, the oval shaped wheels will not mask the gates. So you'll just be really lucky there. But most of the time I find, like 95% of the time I'm manipulating a Lagarde, the wheels do mask each other and you do have to figure out where the low points are on each wheel so that you can unmask the other wheels. Um, you're not going to be able to just do straight up all wheels left or all wheels right. You have to specifically park a few of the wheels in their low, sp low spots in order to run another wheel in isolation. So if you haven't looked into wheel isolation much, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's a very necessary skill if you're going into manipulating other locks, and it's really good as well for replacing the high-low test, for speed, 
uh, for accuracy and just all around it's it's a really good technique in my opinion and that's covered in uh, my other video I believe the advanced techniques video so hopefully this uh, this video cleared up some things and uh, if you still have questions feel free to leave it in the comments below and if you enjoyed this series like and subscribe and I'll try and get new videos up as soon as I can